Dr. Clem, how's it going, my brother? You doing okay? You doing, on uh, it's beautiful out here in Santa Rosa. You know, the weather is incredible. You wouldn't know there this little virus going around creating havoc with our life. And my shepherd, I'm rubbing his leg right now to try to keep him calm because it's his lunch time. Yeah. And I'm going to have to use what we call some behavior modification skill sets. And how do you do that with a German Shepherd? You know, he's actually just a really good dog. He he has a strong will, but he knows who's boss. Now, and so I know the history of your dog. I know the history of your dog. Why don't you tell everybody uh, what kind of dog this is and what you did to get him? It's pretty interesting. Well, he's he's a shepherd from uh, Czechoslovakia, and I traveled a lot. I used to travel a lot, lecturing and doing things like that. And I wanted a dog at home, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. that would be a deterrent for anyone who knew I was gone. Because, you know, with social media today, everybody knows where you're at. And you can actually call up my house on Google and look at it. Yeah. So uh, that's just the way things are. And he's become a best friend, though. I, I've had a lot of dogs in my life, and he's like between a dog and a child. He actually comes to work with me every day. He has a suit on. He's licensed to be a service dog. But I love it. I feel like I'm a kid. And, you know, you had an impact on me. So get this, okay? So I get a dog. I get cowboy boots. <laughs> I get a cowboy hat. And now I have a truck. See, he's part of my Texan swaggle. Yes, so. that's good. I, you know, I didn't know I had that kind of influence on you. Well, you've, uh, you you've, you've done, yeah. you've done plenty for me, including my own, my own uh, restoration. So you're a great friend, yeah. my brother. Hey, uh, you know, uh, in my world, I had to come to the office today and I had to put my scrubs on. I just had to do it. I, I'm not seeing any patients or anything. I just had to walk her up and down the hallway and pretend I was going to do a hygiene check. <laughs> Dress for success. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No doubt. Uh, so we've got uh, John Nosti here in just a minute. Uh, excellent clinician. I mean, just world renowned. So excited to have him on. And then uh, immediately after this, we've got uh, Don Bell from Ivaclar Vivident, who's going to come on and kind of share his viewpoints from a manufacturer uh, perspective. But, uh, you know, what day is today? I don't even remember. It is Thursday. I knew that because I did an Ivaclar webinar this morning on zirconia. Oh, you trying to make how'd that go? It was fun. I, you know, my method with zirconia has been to try to master it. And I've been working with it for eight years, my CAD CAM theater. And I think I finally have it down now. And uh, I don't use it a lot. I like ceramics, but it does come in handy. But, you know, the masses use it. And so as an educator, I always try to look at what the masses are using and then elevate their game so they can feel good about it. So. Isn't it a great time? You know, you and I are in very much on the cutting edge of digital dentistry, but isn't it great to see all the materials that are coming out and changing? And, you know, I, you know 10 years from now, yeah. hopefully there's a new magical material. And uh, actually, let's uh, let's get John in right now. John, I'm going to put you on now because uh, you're... You're definitely into materials. In fact, you do a lot. In fact, I just watched a webinar of yours where it comes to uh, the, what is it, the deep cure from Ivoclar Vivident and the power yeah. cure. Yeah. Power cure. Yeah, power cure. Yeah. So, uh, John, t you know, James and I are good friends. We're, we know you digitally, basically. But, yeah. you know, what, what are you doing in these times? What's, what's happening in your world? You know, uh, thanks. First of all, thanks so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to be with you guys. And uh, I know Tyler, it's been a while since we saw one another in person. You know, I'm going back to uh, to Minnesota and, and uh, that 3M meeting, which I tell a lot of stories about that. <laughs> I, think, I think we need to just leave it at that. Yeah. But I keep going. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a good time. Yeah. But um, but, you know, Right now, I mean, um, I'm looking at this. I, I always kind of feel like I'm a positive individual. I always look to the positive things in life. And to me, you know, I'm looking at this time like this is a vacation I never would have scheduled for myself. I mean, yeah, true. you know, <laughs> I haven't been in practice since March. I think March 16th in New Jersey, we were kind of told to shut it down. I mean, like you guys, I don't know if you're going in to see emergencies. I mean, I'm probably going in once, twice a week to see a few emergencies, um, but nothing, you know, like what we were practicing before. 
But, you know, saying that, I mean, this is a real opportunity, spending so much more time with my family. I mean, having three meals a day with my family, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. I mean, you know, that alone is amazing. Going for for walks with our dog every day. I mean, that's something that we did. We walked our dog, you know, all the time, but now it's like a family outing to, to walk the dog every day, you know? Um, my daughter is 15 years old, uh, Isabella. So she's, you know, she's a freshman in high school. She's dealing with things herself and she doesn't really need us, you know, to homeschool her, but our son is seven. He's in first grade and, you know, to have an opportunity to be a first grade teacher is, I mean, it's amazing. It's so much fun. I mean, hopefully he'll look back at these times and remember, you know, when we were all home together and we had to, you know, go to school on the computer and, and go through math and, you know, vocabulary and stuff and reading. Now, let me just, stop you just for a second. <laughs> You're the first grade teacher, right? Yeah. <laughs> How's that going? You think you could do that as a profession, first grade? No, yeah. I can. Um, I don't know how well I would teach other people's children, <laughs> um, but I, I, I definitely love it. I'm having a good time. I mean, like the three of us are all educators. So, you know, it's in us to try to help people grow and be better. Um, you know, I might not be teaching math the way they want me to teach math in school, uh, you know, nowadays, but I'm having a kick out of it. You know, it's a lot yeah. of fun. Now, how are you uh, managing your team right now, and um, what what, do you, what kind of hope are you giving them in this mess? You know, so uh, you know, one of the positives is that um, you know, thankfully, with unemployment and like the stimulus package they put in, a, a good amount of my employees are actually making a little bit more money a week than what they were with me, and, and I pay really well. But if you look at, you know, in a dental practice, a lot of your employees are in the $20 range for assistance and maybe front office. And, you know, right now they're bringing you more money than they were before. So at least they feel happy about that. Right. Um, you know, we're doing weekly calls, uh, just getting on and having like a Zoom or Skype kind of happy hour to see what everyone's doing and, you know, just keeping in touch. Um Text message. We have a text message thread that every day someone's, you know, posting something on it and we're touching base with one another. Oh, good. So, you know, mainly staying positive, you know, uh, some of my some of my team, they have three kids at home, very close in age, and they're not having the same experience. I am being a first grade teacher <laughs> or second or third grade. So they're really excited to come back to work. Um, so, you know, so we're just keeping in touch and and. You know, we do have an action plan of when we get back of how we're going to ramp up hours and, uh, uh, you know, regenerate the lost production per se from the last two months. Yeah. So what is what is that going to look like, you think? Like, what is the flow going to be in the waiting room? Kind of like the maybe the patient perspective coming through your practice born again. You know, so so several things. I mean, first of all, we're we don't we're not going to start packing them in in a day and cramming things into hours. I, mean, I think we all kind of agreed we would rather work an extra day or two, maybe extend the, the weekday hours a little bit later, um, you know, and maybe even work in shifts if they wanted to, like, you know, have an earlier morning team, have a later evening team, um, divide that up with my associate and I. Um, you know, just to maybe offer more opportunity, get more people in uh, versus trying to cram people into our existing time frame. Yeah. yeah, I think staging appointments will be a little different. I've staged appointments for a long time because I only like one person at a time. But I've built that practice over years and I've made it work. But I do know that the way we manage clients will be different. We don't fully know the full context of that yet. Now, John, do you think it'll be, uh, I've asked this just about everybody. Do you think it, when we all come back, and I'm, maybe the demographics will be different, but do you think it's going to be a drip, drip, drip of patients to you? Or do you think it's going to be a fire hose? Do you think, what do you think it's going to be? You know, what's really interesting. I've, I've talked to quite a few people on this. And um, what I'm hoping is that, you know, the patient population, I don't really think they're discussing, you know, aerosols and PPE mm -hmm. like the dental profession is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, you know, the amount of um, 
quote unquote emergency calls that I've gotten, you know, from patients where it's clearly not an emergency, but they want to get, they want to be seen to me kind of says that they're tired of being quarantined Good and point. they, they want to get out and get about. Um, yeah. so, you know, I'm really, I'm really, I think we're all going to be pleasantly surprised that when we get back that your patient population is just like, yeah, well, why can't I get my teeth cleaned? You know, what's the problem? You know, right. I think I think they're going to be eager to get back and see us. Yeah, I think that I, that's an excellent point. I think they already perceive us as clean rooms. Things are clean. Things are hygienic and they wouldn't assume anything else. I think that's an excellent point that nobody's ever mentioned that before. So thank you for that. Yeah. Good perspective. Yeah. So uh, as far as your patient flow, have you guys talked about like how you're going to run a patient through your waiting room down the hallway? I mean, what, what do you think it's going to look like? You know, so I mean, as it goes right now, um, when patients come to the practice, they're waiting in the parking lot. Um, they call us when as soon as they call us, my office manager greets them at the door. We're basically uh, preventing limiting of them touching anything. They're not sitting in the reception room. They come into the, the office, they immediately go to the patient bathroom, they wash their hands, and then they're immediately escorted into the operatory that I'm going to see them for their emergency. Um, you know, I think that uh, that is probably going to go away a little bit. Um, you know, I do, I do expect there not to be uh, the back-to-back -back patients, even if they're scheduled for an hour, I don't expect that to happen. I do expect some 10, 15 minute window cushions happening and staggering hygiene and my schedule to prevent a backlog of people touching one another per mm -hmm. se, you no, know, in your reception room. But, you know, again, I, I think we're going to make a bigger deal of it than the patients are. Yeah. I mean, if you if you go out and if I don't know if you guys have gone and done any food shopping at all, but, you know, people are all, you know, masked up, gloved up. And, you know, I'll stand there and looking at something and someone will come right up next to me and basically almost bump my shoulder because they don't want to wait three seconds for me to, like, get away from the orange juice. You know? <laughs> but they have no they have no problem pushing the keypad of the credit card machine, you know, and taking the pen. Oh, and writing yeah. On. It's like my, it's my, on their phone with their gloves on. That's my favorite. My wife was just shopping the other night and I was out in the car with the dog waiting and she gets back. And she goes, you know, people have all these protection garments on and they have no awareness of their surrounding It's like once they start shopping distancing be, doesn't become an issue anymore and yeah. and she's really particular about infection control how many and, of you've seen uh, somebody driving around with their mask on <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite i actually saw a meme someone posted they're like if you're driving around with your mask on just stay home even after this is over <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> i have no idea well, and then, you know, we're making fun of this, but in reality, you know, we're making fun because we know how to use that particular equipment. We've been trained on it and how to don them on, take them off. And, and, and they just don't, they just think that they're having a barrier because they saw doctors wear it or something. So maybe they should all wear a white coat, you know, when they go to the grocery store, if they just put a white coat on, maybe that'll be all right. <laughs> now, let me ask you this, how are you going to manage your scrubs? Are you going to use disposable, uh, smocks you know what that's that's a really good question because prior to this like i'm a guy where i wore a shirt and tie i mean yeah i wore a cover up and everything and and you know we changed those out but you know i basically got dressed up like i was a you know almost like a, a banker or something in my practice the kind of practice that i have and mm -hmm. you know that really has has made me think about you know what's that going to look like you know and and I now, I mean, and I would, I would go to the gym and get changed and then put on my, my gym clothes and then put my work clothes in a bag. But, you know, the handling of all that is definitely going to be different. And I'm wondering whether or not we're going to all go back to like a scrub type of environment. That's something hey, that I have yet to be decided on. Hey guys, I think we could have some fun with this because, you know, our hair on our face is a sponge or <laughs> bacteria. Uh, you know, are, are you going to start put one of those surgical caps on and we could have some fun with that. I I've never worn a surgical cap. 
I haven't either. Todd, some, some of my graduate work. <laughs> I mean, I definitely see a market for that coming up. I mean, whoever's yeah. listening, someone's going to be making some designer caps. You we know, need them. designer PPE. I think is definitely going to be the uh, the next phase of of dentistry <laughs> medicine. Yeah, John, if you uh, check out our last show that we did yesterday with a guy from England, uh, he's printing up full mask and doing filters so it, just, it almost looks like scuba gear that goes on i mean i don't know i think there's a camp that's going to say we're going to be just covered to head to toe and then there's another camp that i think we're going to be covered head to toe and in about two days we're going to realize that i can't do this too hot it's i can't breathe i can't talk i just fogged up my my, my loops like you know so it, i think this is going to take a while before we can actually get this figured out so yeah. day one of us having it figured out I, I think is kind of impossible and unrealistic well if you really look at this uh i just saw a interview by a physician from stanford and he's the one that did the antibody testing and they're finding that uh probably and, and i'm not an expert on this so i just listen that when this is all said and done that the percentage of fatality will be very similar to influenza. But having said that, he said there's no way to contain it. So if you think of it from that standpoint, it's more by screening people that we're going to be able to, to stay safe. Because if, if someone comes in and they have it, it to contain it, we can't operate like, like an operating room <clears throat> in, in that essence because it would be totally changing the way we do our practice, even though we're really good. But I think it's more about interviewing people. Even now when I have emergencies, I, I'll i say, let's, let's have a chat about where you've been, who's come to see you, particularly if you're over 70. Have you been out of the house? Has anyone been in your house that you didn't know or a service person or anything like that? And, and maybe that's all you be even overdoing it. But I, I think uh, the future will be more about the risk people we need to really be careful with, but contain it. I don't think we'll be able to do that. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, you know, as Todd was saying before, I think people are going to go back and they're going to start out and it's, and it's going to be gowns and, it's, and have all sorts of, of PPE on. But I think after a while, I just think it's going to go back to mm -hmm. the way it was before. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, that's kind of human nature. <clears throat> well, I, you know, how many hygienists do you have? I got to be sensitive of what I'm getting ready to say. Yeah, I have I have uh, two hygienists on at all times, but all together we have uh, we have four hygienists on our team. Now, how is the how have they been communicating with you? Are they afraid because they're the ones that are really getting thrown into this with uh, you know the ultrasonic scalers? You know, I one of my hygienists has been in the practice longer than I have, and mm -hmm. you know she's always worn a face shield and always covered up, and, and you know talk to her and she's like you know i'm just gonna go back to the way it was before like you know i'm gonna wear a mask i'm gonna put a face shield yeah. on i'm gonna have my arms covered it's gonna be the way it is i mean i was as prone to everything before you know this happened and you know part of that too is you know we think this hit my office back in january so um i think part of my office also feels a little bit like wow you know we we've probably already gotten over this hurdle so um and we feel a little bit not say bulletproof, but you know, well, I, I think when it all comes out. We're going to find that when we do the antibody testing, that a lot of us are going to have the antibody, and we didn't know it. Yeah. Hey, I got a got a question from Rhonda. Um, how do you think this will affect non-patient visitors to your office, like reps? And you know, I, that, I you know what? I didn't even thought of that. That's an excellent question. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. You know, for some reason, where I'm, where I'm, my office is located in South Jersey. Um, the whole county only has about 140 licensed dentists, including specialists. So, you know, for some reason, Southern New Jersey isn't like the reps don't just walk in. You know, um, in general. Uh, unlike northern New Jersey that's been walloped by this, you know, that was something that's really common. Like every day in North Jersey, you might have three reps walk into your practice. I think that's going to go that's going to go down. So I think, um, you know, reps are definitely going to, you know, do different things to reach out versus maybe popping in and popping out of offices. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's that's a great question. You know, you know yeah, go ahead, James. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, well ahead. one thing that this is in fact to me, I. I I'm really communicating a lot on Zoom right now, and I can tell you right now, I'd rather get on a Zoom chat with my rep 
when the time's right because I just don't see people during my work day. Yeah. I just, you know, my patients are there for me. They're paying me for their services, and that's where my, my brain's going to be. But I really think digital chatting is going to be the future. You know, any type of platform and Zoom. I, I didn't really use a lot of Zoom until now, and that, and I'm using it a lot. Yeah. So let me uh, give you a counter. Um, argument on that because you know the three of us are unique individuals I mean we're willing to get on Skype or Zoom or whatever and start talking I don't think most dentists are like that so any of the the territory reps and manufacturing reps that are out there I think if they try to make an appointment with the average doctor with Zoom they're gonna go yeah I'm not gonna do that so I think really well so let's give them some ideas what what do you think are ways that those territory reps could actually get a hold of us digitally go ahead John Text message, you know, so they might not, you might not want to give them the doctor's cell phone, but you know, Hey, yeah, uh, give one of, give your office cell phone to one of your assistants and, yeah. you know, maybe give them a little extra bonus for a month and have them text message, you know, the rep. I think that's, that's a really good way to communicate. And what's kind of cool is like any questions that you have, I mean, they could text message the rep at any point in time during the day, not that the rep has to answer right away. But usually, I mean, you know, someone will get back to you usually within the same day on a text mm -hmm. message. I think that's a really efficient way that reps can um, offer their services to to doctors. You know, that's <clears> a – man, you're just full of great ideas today. Thank thank God <laughs> I wanted you on. I know James didn't want you on, but I did. I, I like you. John, John <laughs> it's an honor to have you here. And, you know, Todd. Todd and I are – you know, we, we kind of bounce off each other. But I can tell you right now, I use FaceTime all the time. I oh, call my mom. I call my sister. I even call my reps with that. And and I, I really think that it is true. Maybe some people aren't caught up to that. But, you you know, Brian Tracy said this 10 years. Actually, it may have been a little longer ago. I heard a lecture of his. And he goes, the people in the future that are going to stay ahead of the game are the ones that can pivot and introduce technology and be able to move their business on a dime. And I think that's what we're seeing now. I, I know Todd and I are a little bit more into the digital platform, but I tell you, I, I see these grads that are up to 20 years out now, and most of them are really integrated to the digital platform. So, and you I'm all, I, I just so made I, an I, executive. I just made to. an executive decision for my practice, and that's uh, we're going to get a cell phone for our practice. I, th I think that's a great. Do you have one, John? Is that? Okay, I think, well, the way, as I was hearing you say that, I was thinking, yeah, what a great idea that our office has a cell phone number so it can receive texts. And, you know, a manufacturing rep can maybe send an image of, you know, whatever their daily specials are or something like that. I'm, I'm writing it down right now, actually. What yeah, so one of the other, yeah, one of the other cool things about, I mean, you, just to, to expand on that, like in the future, um, you know, the benefit, the other, there's so many benefits to the office cell phone. Like how many times maybe does it snow? And, you know, your your office manager has the schedule, but wants to, you know, hit, I don't even forget what it is, star six, six or whatever to block her home phone number before she starts calling patients and having that office cell phone, you know, she can start calling people. Uh, so it's got a it's got a, a lot of a lot of benefits to it. I, brilliant. I think that's a brilliant idea. I'm, I'm, uh, we're going to no. we're going to integrate that. We use Revenue Well, and uh, my my team always has access to that in a mobile way, and we have iPads. In fact, we operate our whole network system here from iPads, and I, I think that concept is very efficient. We even have uh, Opera DDS, where we use our iWatches so we can communicate during the day. So if another client is going to be maybe out of step with the schedule or maybe they couldn't make it i already get that text on my phone i'm there working i get the vibration i just kind of look it's a better day <laughs> that's cool i like that now can you uh james can you can a patient send a text or a let's say a territory rep send a text through revenue well or one of those services maybe that could be yeah. the disc well because yeah i would i would think that the territory rep or the manufacturer rep or whoever this person is would have to be in our patient pool system for that to work. So, well, because there's all the aspects to it, but I, I think with a rep, I mean, most of my reps, I have a good relationship, and I kind of set up beforehand is that if you're dropping by unannounced, just leave the pastries. 
<laughs> yeah. Because you're not going to get me. That works. Or the pot. You, yours are pot me. brownies. You do. I love. I, I love my reps, but you don't show up unannounced. John, and he it, does uh, sedation in his uh, parking lot. They do. They. He just lets them smoke pot in the car, and then they come all stoned. I don't even know how they walk up the stairs to your practice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have an elevator. You do, you know, we're, we have right. that. You got an elevator. I forgot about that. That's awesome. Yeah, Second floor elevator, just to my suite. That's it. <laughs> we had to do that for sedation. So yeah. Hey yeah, John, a- I got I got a question from uh, Tanya Owen, my my good friend from Houston. She says, uh, "Do you think that digital impressions versus analog will be important for cross contamination? What do you think? What do you think about that?" You know, I think that is, that's awesome. I think, um, you know, the, in order to be able to do digital, I mean, there's so many, there's so many huge benefits about that, especially, you know, if you look at doctors, maybe their schedule is trickling in Well, the ability to, you know, fabricate a crown nowadays, maybe before you are prepping and then scheduling the patient, you know, a day or two later or a week later is still milling that in house. Maybe now a days you have the time to prep mill all in one stop. So uh, and that, that's a huge benefit. And then cross-contamination, I think, you know, um, at least in my office, we were cataciding all the impressions before they went out. They, they got put to a bio bag. And, you know, labs, labs do have a, uh, usually a dedicated employee who handles and unpacks and, and, and prevents that from happening. So I don't think that's a huge problem. I think down the road, I mean, you know, labs do save money on, uh, you know, model work and things like that with digital. So I think there's a lot of other benefits besides just cross-contamination, but it's a good point. Yeah, no, in fact, I, uh, I just thought of this. Uh, let's go down the, let's go down the rabbit hole of like maybe how a lab technician works with us today, because James and I are a little bit on the CAD cam side biased and you're, you work very heavily with your labs and how, how do you think they're doing right now, lab technicians, and how really how can we support them because they they're struggling as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, labs are definitely um, definitely decreasing uh, what they're doing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know a lot of uh, employees got furloughed in, in some of the labs that I'm working with, so that's been uh, you know that's been a concern. Sorry, I put my stuff on Do Not Disturb, but that's okay. Disturb. It's one of the lab guys calling you, saying, "Hey, be that's quiet." <laughs> exactly. uh, I was grabbing my phone too. <laughs> I didn't know where it was coming from. It's like, man, I have it on Do Not Disturb. It's not supposed to ring. But uh, in any event, um, you know, I think right now it's it's just a matter of in terms of what do you want to do for your practice if you are using a lab. I mean, not only is it a benefit for the lab, but one of the things that we are doing is. You know, we're going to be a little bit biased about how we're going to ramp up our production. And obviously, if the patients can tolerate it, if you have someone who has to get in right away Mm -hmm. um, for an emergency, get those people. Obviously, you want to deal with your indirect restorative patients first when you can get back to your practice and, uh, you know, get your office production up by seeing those patients first. So that's one of the things that we're currently, you know, working on and just telling the labs, you know, the same thing I'm telling other dentists, you know, it's like you, you can and will make this production up. I mean, Mm -hmm. thankfully we're not a, we're not a restaurant where they were open Mm -hmm. seven days a week and they only have a certain footprint and hour schedule. I mean, you can increase your hours, you can increase your days, and you can bring back your production to what what we missed. It's just a matter of you know putting it off a period of time. Yep, good yep. Good, good, point. good point. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, as far as uh, uh, a lab, I would think that the most creative lab techs that are out there, you know, mom and pop shops, are going to be the ones that really rise to the occasion. And you know, there's there's I've heard a lab where they supply the scanners or, you know, maybe, you know, maybe that's too expensive, but maybe another thing would be they have their own office cell phone number. I love your idea. I think this is really good even for them. And they could be ready to go at a moment's notice. So you could show them with your phone, the patient's central that just broke, you know, something like that, more of a direct communication. So it's kind of like, 
Yeah. You know, Todd, on that topic, you know, now's the time to get a digital scanner because there's no better efficient way for a lab and your office to turn things around and communicate. And I, I lectured on that at the last CDA using multiple different type of scanners. And I can tell you right now, a lab would much rather have a digital impression than analog. And wow. I've, I've heard that from multiple people, and uh, and you're probably going to have some pretty good deals. I, I know, Todd, you told me about a Ford dealership that can't keep cars on a lot right now, right? Yeah, this is, yeah, let's talk about yeah. this for a minute. This is yeah. really unusual times uh, because, you know, uh, Ford right now, they can't keep their cars on their lot because they're, they're at zero percent financing and it's for like 18 months. I don't know. It's some crazy thing. And it's kind of like, wow, this is silly not to do it. So it, in, in my heart right now, it almost seems silly for a dentist to actually invest heavily or something in technology. But man, if these manufacturers or yeah. the dealers gave us a rep that's too good to be true, what do you think about jumping on something like that, John? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be amazing. I mean, I know that, <clears throat> you know, um, I've been looking to pull the trigger on on a digital scanner. And it's kind of funny that someone in if you if you if you consider me a leader uh, in the dental world, it's kind of, of yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of funny that I don't yet have a scanner. And, you know, part of my uh, reason for not having one has been, you know, twofold. Number one, it's been almost been analysis of paralysis. Which one do I get? It almost right. seems like if I wait six more months, there's something else that's better that's coming out. And that's always a trend that's kind of seemed to happen. I mean, even going back how many years ago, you and I had that discussion in Minnesota about me getting a scanner. Um, you know, other part too is a good amount of what I do is not breaking contact between teeth when I'm doing veneer. So that's kind of, to me, has been a little bit of a hang up of jumping to the digital world. Um, but if someone came up by and said, Hey, listen, John, take the scanner. We'll do it, uh, interest free or don't pay for six months or, you know, don't pay for a year, uh, whatever it is, you know? Any kind of deal to throw it into my practice, um, I would probably I jump on it in a heartbeat. So, John, let yeah. me just fill you in on a little bit. There are manufacturers that are watching right now. Tell them what you want. You tell them right yeah. now what you want, what you uh, think set, would be hey, reasonable. Now's the time to the, do it. Set the trend, John. Set the trend for us. Set They're listening to you. So, so <laughs> let's let's really think about this. I mean, if you look at if they're really out to help the average dentist, I'm not even going to say about myself, average, that's the average dentist out there mm -hmm. to immediately get back to their practice, cut their overhead and just try to ramp up production in a good way. It's almost like, you know, put a scanner in, in someone's practice and defer payments six months. You yeah, know, yeah. I, I think that's reasonable for um the, the average general dentist to say, okay, it might take two, three months for my office to come, come back to normal. We don't know what's going to happen. And I think a lot of people might be, you know, saying, yeah, you know what? Six month opportunity for me to get on this before I have to make a payment and don't charge me a crazy amount of interest rate on it. And mm -hmm. even maybe a super low interest rate. That'd be unbelievable. Yeah, I think uh, I, I I hear what you're saying on that. I think it needs to be farther out. I mean, like it need because I don't even know what my practice is going to look like in three months after we get back, four months. And so, the, I, you know, you got to have a cushion of time, I think. And so, you know, if it's I, I would think it's got to be at least a year of, you know, like zero percent or something like that or deferred or payments. I, I, a year of no payments and zero percent. Love it. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Whoever's listening, if he has that deal, call me after this, will you? <laughs> but between the three of us, I'm glad we got that worked out. Yeah, well, there you go. The, I think we just set the bar. And But the thing, I know we're laughing about this, but this is important because, you know, we're sitting at home for, you know, two months, and we're just worried about coming in the into the office and start working. Could it possibly be that the more efficient way to start your practice up again is the digital platform. I mean, it, it may very well be this and we got to be more efficient. But anyway, I don't want to I don't want to get this down too far of a rabbit hole in digital unless unless John's going to get one. No, no. I mean, I'm going to tell you that I think that is I mean, everybody's got time right now. So you look at it where, you know, you know, one of the things that I was even going to mention before you said, like, what are some of the things that you're doing? It's like, you know, this is a great opportunity for dentists to better themselves personally and professionally, you know? So 
whatever it is that you're doing, if, if you thought about going to digital, I mean, what great way to learn all the ins and outs of getting involved in it, if not right now. I mean, this is a great opportunity. So for people to put that that deal out there and to even put it in people's hands to play with it, even on models at home, even with their family, you know, scan their family's mouths. I mean, what else are they doing right now? So they might as well, you know, learn that. I think that's that's sometimes a lot of dentists don't want to jump in. And it's not just because the expense, it's the, hey, look at me. I'm already, I know I'm really good at taking impressions. Yeah. You know? So if I'm really good at taking impressions, I don't want to have to start something up with a patient and all of a sudden look like I'm no longer an expert at it. Yep. Good point. But, yeah, but excellent. if I can learn this at home, you know, when no patients are around and all of a sudden I get back and now I have this new great toy that the patient already looks like, wow, how long you've had this forever? Like, yeah, I've had this for a long time. You know, <laughs> I think that uh, I think that allows people to jump in into it faster, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, great. Uh, uh, John, you're really into uh, materials and I appreciate that with you. Um, what do you think is the future in dental materials? Where do you see us, you know, turning this big boat? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I do think that, you know, what, what we're seeing with zirconia and uh, the benefit to having a monolithic restoration that has uh, superior strength, yet the aesthetics that, you know, we've always kind of want it with ceramic, but don't quite have it when we uh, go towards the more aesthetic zirconia. I definitely think that's, you know, I know it's here, um, but I think that's going to be more, you know, more widespread. Um, You know, as far as that goes, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. I I almost can't picture what else they're going to come out with. You know, in terms of ceramics and zirconia. Yeah. So uh, you do a lot of cosmetics and so does James. Uh, What is your you don't have to say a product name if you don't want to. I I don't care. Uh, You can. Uh, What is your go to material and how are you? Are you are you doing anything in your off time right now to become better at it? Yeah. So um, I definitely I have two two really favorite materials. Um, one of them that I have a tendency to use more than another, just because how my practice is. Mm -hmm. So if you came to my office and you wanted something totally cosmetic and there wasn't a functional component, like you didn't have erosion, attrition, you weren't, you know, a bed grinder, you didn't have any loss of video. So basically, um, you know, pretty, if you're a pretty person before, but you needed to have something even prettier, you know, that's, uh, empress in my practice. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the most part, a lot of what I do with, you know, reconstructions and patients with breakdown, I mean, that's been lithium disilicate for a long time in my practice. And, you know, just because, you know, where I started, um, that's been IPS Emax has kind of been my, my, uh, my go-to material for a long period of time. Yeah. It's been a good one. Been a real good one. Now, uh, so we're all uh, educators. We've taught a lot of Emacs and everything and different nuances of it. How do you think uh, the lithium disilicate category could be improved? I, I, I mean, I know there's other manufacturers coming in on all this, but, you know, if this category is growing the way it is, I mean, they what are they going to do for us to make this better? You know, I still think if they could get the aesthetics where Empress is, I mean, and I know people say that it's there. Um, but if they could even make it look prettier with the strength of lithium disilicate, I still think that's that's where it's that's what's that's what's needed. Because if you go back, I mean, you know, you look at Feldspathic, you know, just a pattern liquid veneer, how beautiful that can look. And if you look at Empress and Authentic and uh, those materials and, you know, some of those cases that I've done 20 years ago that come in, it's like, wow, this stuff look, looks amazing, you know? Uh-huh. And, you know, Emacs looks really, really good. It's really good, you know, but I still, I'm still, you know, I think you guys would agree with me. I think that's just that little extra jump in aesthetics would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think what we need is that opalescence, fluorescence that behaves like a natural tooth and um 
and we know that uh, microfelspathic has that a whole lot better than even a leucite. My, my favorite is always a microfelspathic if I can, if it functionally works. They're just magical, but uh, it's going to get better. Now, so I, I think, you know, the manufacturers that are potentially watching right now, you know, they go by what dentists want in general. So right now we want strength, strength, strength. And all we talk about is flexural strength and, you know, it's 1200, 1100. Nobody even knows what those numbers mean, <laughs> actually, <laughs> or fractured toughness and everything. You know, would either one of you be willing to have, let's say, just Emacs, because everybody's familiar with Emacs, maybe that's not so high strength, but has a better crystalline structure size so that we can get some of those properties that we're looking for? Um, you know, in other words, in other words, I, is Emacs, I mean, we've all had great success with Emacs when it comes to strength, yep. no doubt, right? So yep. if they reduce the strength by 20%, so we could have 80% improvement on uh, cosmetics, would you be willing for something for that trade-off or no? That's a great question. Um, so it's going to be stronger than Empress or a regular uh, Lucite reinforced. Correct. But it's not as strong. Uh, nah, sounds I, like no. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so because I think I think the the areas that I use Emacs, I'm using it on patients who have destroyed their natural dentition. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I really want to conserve as much two structure as possible. I want to bond to enamel, and to me, you know, that's Emacs. Yep. So yep. I could even go back, you know, to your question and then where do I see zirconia going? If they can, and I know people say we can bond zirconia. But if we have long-term studies that show that we can actually bond zirconia, mm -hmm. I think that's where the future in dentistry is because it's going to be tough. If you tell me that you can have a 1,000, 1,200 megapascal you know, fracture toughness, shear strength, resistance, restoration that looks as good as Emacs or Empress, I mean, I think it's going to be really hard not to say that this isn't the material for dentistry, period, across the board. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'd like to inject this because I love lithium disilicate. Emacs has been around for a long time. I'm, li I'm like you, John. I like the conservative prep. I do all my own ceramics I have for a while, and I teach it at the AACD as well. And, and people want conservative restorations. I can tell you that. They're coming in my practice, and they don't want their teeth ground down. But I'm not going to mention the manufacturer yet because I'm not ready to do it. But I'm working with a, a lithium disilicate-like material that – Initially, I'm seeing the same opalescence and fluorescence as a microfelspathic. Oh my goodness! And um, look at how special you are. I'm, in fact, I'm actually going to do a few of my wife, probably during this downtime. Oh nice! Because I need to upgrade some veneers I did years ago, and uh, I, I'm not ready to endorse it yet. But what I've what I've seen thus far is really pretty nice. You know, you, you've got to have tested time. I, I think if I've made any mistakes in my career is getting on. A new product when you think it's good, it's by a good company you respect, and then it doesn't it doesn't pan out, and then you uh, regret making the, the dive. And and I, I think as dentists we have to be careful about that. And I've I've done that twice in my career, so I'm, that's why I'm not mentioning the name because I'm not going to endorse something until you know I want to see it in the mouth for a while because ceramics change over time. We we know Emacs gets more translucent. I heard a lecture about uh, complimenting on the fact that. As we seat restorations, the refractory index changes as they become hydrated. And that's why a lot of times, like if you put an impress in, it pretty much is close to what it looks like the day you placed it, whereas Emax is not because of the refractory index shifts that we see with hydration. And once you get to know that, you can work around it. But I still like that opalescence and fluorescence because that's – that's what looks natural. Man, we are a bunch of geeks. We sound like <laughs> a bunch of – I'm a total geek, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it, man. I'm right there with you guys. <laughs> hey, John, right. can I can I ask you a favor? You've been great today, man. Can uh, can we have you back on, and we, maybe we just talk about materials? Yeah, wanna... oh, I'd love to, man. All I, right, I, cool. Let I, me uh, let me put you down for that. And uh, I need uh, I need to know what a burpee is. What is a burpee? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so you remember squat thrusts like in gym class in high school where you bend down and you kick your legs out? So a burpee is that with as you kick your legs out, you do a push-up, bring your legs back in, and then jump up in the air when you're uh, done. 
All right. So on our next on our next video, we're gonna have you do a bur some burpees for us, and then we're gonna. Um, <laughs> the, thought, the thought is we all need to back up and do it in unison. So that means I better start practicing. Uh, well, yeah, I don't want to look like a white guy dancing. So I'm going to learn how to do <laughs> I'm going to learn how to do a burpee. John Nosti, man, you are awesome. Just a, just yeah. a blessing to have you today. Excellent, Thank you. excellent, excellent job. You got any last words for for us? Yeah, I just want to thank you guys. I mean, what you guys do for the digital world is amazing. I mean, I've definitely been following you guys and seeing what you guys are putting out. And uh, I'm excited to uh, to to dive in with one of these manufacturers who's going to reach out to me. And uh, and I can follow you guys even more. <laughs> but, right now, John, I just heard you have one of the strongest reaches out there. And it's just an honor to spend some time with you online. No, yeah. thank you. It's been It's been my honor and my pleasure. You guys are awesome. Thanks, yeah. brother. We'll, thanks uh, we'll catch up with you again another time. So uh, thanks, man. See you around. Thanks. James Clem, what would you think of John Nosti? What a cool guy, huh? Uh, I think I'd like to hang out. Yeah. Uh, he, he's, know, got a, I, he's got a huge following on Dentaltown, if you ever go on there. He's got. You know, I, I kind of looked in. You know, you know some people I don't know, and and I just feel like I don't get out a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I like to do things on my digital platform and kind of stay here and play on my lab bench. And I told you this before, when I get old and maybe I'm not operating on all cylinders, you mm -hmm. give me a hand piece and some ceramics to grind on, I'll be a happy old man. Yeah. You know that he has the number one watched uh, CE program on Dentaltown. I mean, that's, yeah. that tells you a lot about his caliber. So yeah. thank you, John, for coming on. It's you know, I, I find it motivating to hang out with people like that because it, it invigorates me. And, and I just admire. I think the longer I'm in this profession, uh, I really celebrate knowing others that know a lot because I'm a curious person. I like to learn things and it's never too late to start learning something new. Yeah. And as far as educators, this guy, he does he does live patients in his classes. So that, that takes a lot of, you know, what, that's awesome. To take that's awesome. Well, so we've talked about manufacturers uh, with him and uh, you know, what great timing, what a great segue. Our very next guest who's gonna come right around the corner here after we sign off is Don Bell from Ivaclar Vividen. Looking forward to it. Yeah, yes. that'll be fun. Well, you got any last words for the show, buddy? Oh, I see your hey, dog thanks. back there. A place great people, Todd. You know what I've learned out by from you is that you know everyone. And, no, no uh, way. I like it. <laughs> and it, that, that, I, I was very inspired by John today. So thank you for uh, getting on, on schedule. And we want everyone to stay safe, keep your heart high, think positive, And remember, your hiccups are your greatest strength building factor. And you're going to be so much better as a person when you come out of this. Dig deep. You're going to win. Thanks, yeah. brother. See you around the corner. Yeah.